So um, there are two types of substances. We can take matter, which is general, and break it into two uh, subcategories. We can say that matter could either be pure or matter can be a mixture. So of the pure things, there's a couple of different types. One type of pure matter is called an element. And an element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into a simpler substance. So um, all of the elements that we know are on the periodic table. There are currently 118 known elements. And an element, the atoms on the periodic table, the elements on the periodic table only differ by how many particles make them up. So elements, um, we can tell whether uh, the substance we're looking at is an element by looking at the periodic table and trying to determine whether or not it's on there. We were looking at neon and argon and oxygen earlier. Those are all uh, members of the periodic table, but water is not on the periodic table. So whereas water might be pure, if we have pure water, maybe we, we got pure water from a water filter, it is not an element. It's made of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. So here are the current 118 elements on the periodic table. And again, we'll get into this more in the next chapter, but an element is a pure substance. So that if I have a handful of carbon, for example, every particle inside my handful of carbon looks exactly the same. They all look the same. So that's why we can call that a pure substance. If all of the particles look the same, then it's pure. And further, if all of the, if all of the particles look the same, and we can find the name of those particles on this table, not only is it pure, we can go a step further and say it's a pure element. Uh, so atoms are the smallest particles of an element. If I take a piece of gold, and I chop it in half, and then I chop it in half again, and chop it in half again, I can eventually make that sample of gold get so small that it's only one single atom of gold. And if I try to chop that single atom of gold in half again, it's no longer gold. That's not to say that an atom is the smallest thing. We'll learn that atoms are made up of smaller particles, subatomic particles. But if I take an atom of gold, one atom of gold, and cut it in half, I don't have half an atom of gold. It's no longer called gold at that point. I just have a collection of neutrons and protons and electrons. So an atom is the smallest particle that retains the properties of an element. That's not to say, again, that it's the smallest particle, but it is the smallest particle of an element. A molecule is similar. Uh, it consists of two or more atoms that are stuck together. And we call that a chemical bond. So there are different kinds of molecules. We saw oxygen is a molecule because it comes as two oxygen atoms. So they're the same kind of atoms. And so when they're stuck together, both of the atoms are atoms of oxygen. So we call that pure. And furthermore, we call that a pure element because oxygen, the only particles that are on there are oxygen, and oxygen is a member of the periodic table. But molecules don't have to be. Uh, don't have to have the same uh, atoms. A molecule could have, two, uh, could have two atoms of different elements. Oxygen just happens to be a molecule that has two atoms of the same element, whereas water has an atom of oxygen and uh, two atoms of hydrogen. So it is also, water is a molecule, H2O, but it, again, it's not an element. It has an H and an O. So those are two different elements that compose a molecule of water. Uh, so again, here's our gold nugget. If I cut it in half again and again and again and again and again, I will eventually be left with individual gold atoms. So this picture right here uh, comes from a scanning tunneling microscope, which is a special microscope that can see things that are so small that it can actually see individual atoms. That's what these are. These little circles that are in this image on the right, those are actually individual gold atoms. Um, so this is not just a representation that we use to help us understand chemistry. Atoms are real, and they're actually spherical, and we can actually see them with our eyes if we use a powerful enough microscope. So again, we were talking about oxygen being O2. 
Oxygen is an element because its name is on the periodic table, but it doesn't come one at a time. It comes two at a time. Oxygen is O2. The same is true of hydrogen. Hydrogen is H2. It's pure. Both of the balls are the same color. That means it's the same element. But it's not a single atom. It's two atoms. So it's a molecule of hydrogen. This is a molecule of oxygen. This is a molecule of phosphorus, P4. They come four at a time. This is a molecule of sulfur, S8. They come eight at a time. These are all pure elements, but they don't necessarily come as atoms. They come as molecules, either two atoms at a time, or four atoms at a time, or even eight atoms at a time. <coughs> so again, we can have a type of molecule where both elements are the same. That's what we're seeing here. They're both oxygen, or they're both hydrogen. We can also have a molecule that has different kinds of elements. Here's water. It has an atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. This is a molecule. This particle is a molecule. All of those atoms are stuck together with chemical bonds, but I can't call this an element. This has two elements. It has oxygen and hydrogen. So if this is not, if this is a molecule, and this is a molecule, if this is called an element, and this is not called an element, then what is this one called? Well, this is called of a compound. A, com or a compound is um, a molecule that's made of two or more different elements. So water is a molecule, oxygen is a molecule. Oxygen is an element because both balls are the same color. Water is not an element because, both ball because the balls are different colors. Therefore, it must be a compound. Same with carbon dioxide. It has, this is a molecule. All these pieces are stuck together. So this is as, acts as one particle. But this particle of carbon dioxide has two oxygen atoms and one carbon atom. They're not the same color. They're not the same element. Therefore, this is a compound. Glucose. Carbon oxygen, and hydrogen. So this is a, a much bigger molecule. This has 24 atoms, it's a, and all of those atoms are stuck together. So this is also called a molecule. Molecules come in lots of sizes. You have molecules that only have two atoms at a time, molecules that have eight atoms at a time, molecules that have 24 atoms at a time, molecules that have literally thousands of atoms in them. It's one molecule. So. Um, a molecule doesn't necessarily have to be something that's small. What designates something as a molecule is if all of the different atoms are stuck together, stuck to each other, and they can't break apart very easily. We call that a molecule. Okay, so the, pure, the two types of pure substances are elements and compounds. Elements cannot be broken down further, um, and all of the particles are the same type and the same color if we're looking at a representation. Compounds are pure substances that can be broken down further, so they'll, ex they'll uh, consist of at least two types of elements, or more. Right? So hydrogen and oxygen is a compound. C, H, and O, that's a compound with three elements. Silver chloride, that's a compound with two elements. So uh, elements are pure. All the particles are the same. Compounds are also pure. All of the particles are the same. And I have a sample of water. All of the particles in the water are H2O particles. So if I can draw a circle around every particle in that sample and they all look the same, then I can call that pure. So generally, to turn a compound into its elements, one way to do that is by heating it up. I can heat up mercury oxide. And after I heat it up, I have mercury metal, and oxygen gas. So I've taken the compound that consists of two elements that are stuck together, and I've heated it up, and now they're not stuck together. Now it's just pure mercury atoms and pure oxygen atoms. So a mixture is composed of two or more types of matter that are pure, but they are mixed together. So for example, salt by itself Sodium chloride is a pure compound, NaCl. Water by itself is a pure compound, H2O. All of the molecules are the same. 
but when I mix them up and I have salt water, salt water is no longer pure. It contains more than one thing. It contains water and it contains salt. So anytime a substance contains more than one particle, more than one type of particle, it's no longer pure. So there are two types of mixtures, homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures, just like there's two types of pure substances, elements and compounds. So a homogeneous mixture is one that has a uniform composition throughout. So um, one way to think about this is it's the difference between drinking um, a cup of Kool-Aid where you take water and you take the powdered Kool-Aid mix and you pour it into the water and as you mix it up you have a drink or maybe you made chocolate milk or maybe you made a cup of tea. When you have this drink and you take a sip from it, the first sip of your drink tastes the same as the last sip of your drink. All the sips taste the same. If something is evenly mixed up, then we call that homogenous. Now think about if you uh, took your water and your Kool-Aid and you dumped the Kool-Aid in and it went to the bottom of the cup and you didn't mix it up. Then the first drink of water of, of the drink that you made would be very watery because all of the sugar and all of the Kool-Aid mix is at the bottom of your cup. But as you got to the bottom, you kept drinking this drink and you get to the bottom of your cup, then it's going to be very sweet. So one way to determine if, if a mixture is homogeneous or heterogeneous is to determine if it's mixed up very well. Um, a good trick is to think about what happens if you put it into a blender. If I take a, a mixture and I put it into a blender and turn on the blender and then pour it out, is it the same before it went in as when it came out of the blender? So let's take um, orange juice, for example. If I have a glass of orange juice and I pour it in a blender and I turn the blender on and then take the orange juice out of the blender, was it the same before and after? Well, yeah. I mean, depending on how much pulp there was in there, you poured orange juice in, you got orange juice out. Therefore, orange juice must be homogenous because the blender didn't change it. It was already blended. It was already mixed up well. And what if we took an orange? If I have an orange before it goes in the blender, and then I put it in a blender and blend it up, and I get orange juice out on the other side, an orange and orange juice are different. An orange is not homogenous because it's not mixed up evenly. You have the peel that's on the outside, you have the pith that's on the inside, you have the juice, you have the seeds, and they're all occupying different places inside of the orange. Orange juice doesn't have different parts. If I point to any part of the glass of orange juice, it's always the same. Orange juice, orange juice, orange juice, orange juice. If I point to different parts of an orange, I can point to the peel, which is definitely different than the seeds. So an orange is heterogeneous and orange juice is homogeneous. So um, here is an example of a homogeneous mixture. This is oil and vinegar salad dressing. Right? If you've ever had this dressing before at home or at a restaurant, when it first when you look at it at first before you've shaken it you have a layer of oil on top and you have a layer of vinegar on the bottom because vinegar is like water and water and oil don't mix the oil sits on top but if you shake it up then you can turn what is homog what is heterogeneous which has uh, oil on the top and liquid on the bottom and if you shake it up you can make it fairly homogeneous because then they'll have all of these parts that are pretty much the same. That's why you would shake it because you don't want to pour pure oil on your salad or pure vinegar on your salad. You want to mix them up. So if we look over here at the Gatorade, if I zoom in really, really close, I can't see any difference. So this is definitely homogenous. All of the components of the Gatorade are all mixed together evenly and I can't see a difference. But here in the salad dressing, there are different parts. So here, this looks like this is pure vinegar, and over here, this looks like this is oil. So if I can identify different parts of a mixture, then it must be a heterogeneous mixture. 
So here is the table that helps us determine what kind of mixture we have. Um, matter can be pure or it can be a mixture. So if all of the particles inside of the sample are the same, then it is pure. But it's not necessarily, uh, we, we can't stop there. So then I have an element or a compound. So if I look at the elements that are in there, if I look at all the particles, let's say that I have a sample of oxygen gas. In a sample of oxygen gas, all of the particles are going to look like this. So it's pure because all the particles look the same. Now to determine if it's a pure element or a pure compound, I have to look at that particle itself. Now when I'm looking at this particle of O2, I see that both of the atoms that make up this particle are the same. This one's red and this one's red. This one's oxygen and this one's oxygen. If they're the same particle within the molecule, it must be an element. If there are different particles within the molecule, then it must be a compound. But it's still pure. Pure oxygen gas, pure water, pure carbon dioxide. So what makes them pure is the fact that every particle inside that sample is an H2O particle. What makes it a compound is that H is hydrogen and O is oxygen, and so water is made of two elements, so it itself cannot be an element. Okay, so if we go on this side, does my sample, are all the particles in my sample the same? No. All right, so then what kind of mixture do I have? I know I have a mixture if the particles are not the same. If the particles are mixed up evenly, that's a homogeneous mixture. If the particles are not mixed up evenly, that's a heterogeneous mixture. 